Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to school. Welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful and safe and restful spring break. As we move forward with our school year, we have about seven weeks left of school. Want to make the most of it, most of it with our online e-learning. So let's begin with some welcomes and announcements. Google Classroom is set up and ready to go for this week. Need a few emails still. Sometimes emails aren't working. We're working to get to the bottom of that. I do have some invites out to parents as well as kids. If the child's email isn't working right now, you can always use the parent email until we figure out that glitch issue. Sometimes it's a domain name issue. I've talked to Mr. Colin about that. Essentially, we've got weekly assignments posted for everyone on Google Classroom. I've created folders for every child on the Google Classroom in the drive. Great place to turn in your work. I'd rather start using that now instead of the live or the, the streaming section because that is just not as organized. It was great to start, but now that we figured out some other things, how to use Google Classroom more effectively, I'd like to move forward that way. Uh, I actually looked at my sons and figured out that you can uh, how to, to use it from the, the child's perspective, not just from the teacher end. Let's see here, etiquette. So we are back in school, kids. What that means is that now that we're back in school, our expectations of behavior for presentations are pretty much the same. Make sure you're, you're listening. Make sure you are raising your hand or using that little Zoom tag to raise your hand. Please make sure that you are bringing a notebook and a pencil, something to write with, so that you can take notes. If we're gonna be doing a math presentation, then you're gonna be wanting to write down problems and take notes, we're gonna be practicing. So please be prepared for your presentation. Uh, take good notes, this is a life skill that we need to work on in general. And uh, let's just make sure that we have good Zoom etiquette today as we move forward. Thank you very much. So, the day of the day today, uh, April 6th, is International Day of Sport for Development and Peace. And it celebrates the power of sport in promoting peace and erasing cultural barriers. <laughs> you can imagine how much I enjoy this day. I love sports. I love playing sports. Obviously, soccer is my game. And I thought it would be awesome today to bring us a quote from the legendary Pele. And I'll get to that in a minute. So, well, kids, I just want to fill you in on what's been going on with me at home. Uh, one thing that I think would be great for everybody to try at home is horticulture. horticulture. And what do I mean by that? Well, hortus is the Latin word for garden. And horticulture is basically the art of gardening and raising plants. And so in honor of that, I'd like to read a poem <laughs> from my favorite poet, Shel Silverstein. And after I read that, then I will talk about what I've been doing at home with my family to start our own <laughs> garden, we hope. I'm not sure if I have a green thumb. So this is The Farmer and the Queen by Shel Silverstein. She's coming, the farmer said to the yowl. Oh, what shall I, what shall I do? Shall I bow when she comes? Shall I twiddle my thumbs? The owl asked, who? The queen, the queen, the royal queen. She's passed, she'll pass the farm today. Shall I salute, he asked the horse. The horse said, nay. Shall I give her, her a gift, he asked the wren. A lovely memento for her to keep? An egg or a peach or an ear of corn? The wren said, cheap. But should I curtsy or should I cheer? Oh, here's her carriage now. What should I do? He asked the dog. The dog said, bow. And so he did and so she passed. Oh, tra la 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 la. She smiled, she did, he told the sheep. The sheep said, bah. The reason I read this poem, kids, is because I have <laughs> identified myself as a farmer. I am desperately trying to raise plants. My mom had a green thumb. I'm not sure I will have a green thumb, <laughs> but Henry and I are going to try. He's been working with our neighbor, uh, working on the garden with dirt and with cutting out shrubs and doing all sorts of that work. It's been really fun for us. And I'd like to share with you a couple of things. So this is one of our planters. This is basically just an egg carton cut in half. 
And this one's got some uh, potting soil and we planted seeds a week ago. I think last Tuesday, there's obviously nothing yet. Hopefully we will have things in a couple weeks. I'll keep you posted. If not, I may have to try some different soil. I have been watching some YouTube videos trying to figure out what's the best way to grow some things indoors. And it's right now it's probably too cold to grow stuff outside. Uh, in fact, it is. So what I've done is I've got, you know, this whole sunroom here that I'm using to with a whole bunch to raise uh, plants here. So we shall see. Uh, I've got another great example. This is one you can do at home. You can buy some green onions and then you can plant them in just a little cup of water. And as long as you have the roots from a green onion, you can plant it in a cup of water and it'll grow. I'm not entirely sure at what point I'm supposed to put these actually in the soil, in the garden, but I'm pretty excited. Some of these, you can see where the growth has happened after you, the cut. Some of those you can see that already. Who knows, but this is a fun thing that we can do. Learning about plants and horticulture during this time, I think would be great. I actually just read an article about how gardening is on the rise. So I highly recommend, you know, plant something, uh, get some seeds, send us pictures. We want to know what you're raising. And most importantly of all, save some tomatoes for me. All right. So that is horticulture. I wanted to talk about that. And my challenge for you is to grow something at home, have some fun. I'd love to, if I get some time, to do some extra presentations on botany, seeds, the parts of a leaf, etc. cetera. Uh, so I'm excited about this. So kids, I hope you are too. All right. So uh, obviously one of our challenges is to parse the quote of the day. And the, part, the quote of the day is, everything is practice from Pele. And this gives me a wonderful opportunity to share a little bit about Pele. So Pele was born in 1940. He's currently 79 years old. And he was a Brazilian football soccer player. And he is widely regarded as the greatest of all time. He's been on this century team, that century team for the 20th century. He scored 650 goals in 694 league matches. Now think about how difficult it is to score a goal in a regular soccer match at the professional level. He did it, practically won a game. In fact, I'd love it if someone could find out what the ratio, like how many goals per game he scored. Let's see. Oh, total in his career counting friendly matches, et cetera, he scored 1,281 goals in 1,363 games. So I'd love it if someone could work out how many goals per game that is. That's a great math problem. He played for the Brazilian team Santos at age 15. He joined the Brazilian national team at age 16, and he won a record three World Cups with Brazil, 1958, 1962, and 1970, and he's the only player to have done that. He connected the phrase, the beautiful game, with soccer, and he is known in America for playing for a team called the New York Cosmos between 1975 and 1977. He raised public awareness and interest in soccer in America. And I grew up playing both baseball and soccer, and I guess we can credit part of that popularity to Pele. Uh, he has since worked as an ambassador for the sport, promoting soccer, promoting peace around the world. He was an ambassador for ecology at some point. In 1994, he was a UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador. So in honor of International Day of Sport for Development and Peace, I decided to use a quote from <laughs> Pele, everything is practice, and I'm sure you guys know I will have I have much to say about practice. Look, practice is one of the most important things we can do. Repetition, doing things over and over, especially when done right, is the most important thing to do. You don't want to practice bad habits because if you repeat and practice bad habits, you'll just get better at them. You want to practice good habits, getting up on time, making sure you brush your teeth, making sure that you don't stay up too late, make sure you don't play too many video games. So we wanna make sure after spring break that we are getting in a good routine and setting up good habits and practicing those good habits. So being good kids, making sure we're listening to our parents at home, making sure we're doing our schoolwork, making sure we build a schedule for ourselves. That's one of the great things you can do. And I just wanna emphasize that again, build a schedule for yourself so that you can get in the routine of doing good things well in a habit, a routine, everything is practice. What Pele is trying to say here is that 
that's how he became known as Pele. Like he practiced. Sure, there was natural talent there, obviously, but natural talent without practice and uh, good practice and skill building is going to be wasted talent. So kids, make sure you have that daily schedule. Make sure you're practicing good habits at home as we move through this, as we move forward with our online academy. All right. So one of my other challenges is, of course, make sure I'm not hiding anything. How many playing cards do you see? That is a challenge for today, for right now. Okay. All right, I've got a mom saying you mentioned that there are folders and assignments on Google Classroom. I can't say anything like that for Jaden. Uh, let me work that out and see what I can do working with my son Henry's Google Classroom. We can always post things on the streams for now if you cannot find the Google folders. Oh, and of course, <laughs> yes, this student, the mom asked the question and the student got the correct answer. That, oh, I got another student who just came out with the correct answer. That is so true, the playing cards. Uh, I'd also like it if you could name the suits of playing cards. I'm not sure if you see all the suits here, but if you can name the suits, that would be great too. All right, so let's go to some riddles for the day. And I've got a few of them. So this first one is, is a math riddle, and this was given to me by a, uh, a parent. So there is a boy named Elliot, and he has a room with 100 light switches, numbered 1 to 100. Each light switch is turned off. Elliot invites 100 friends over and gives each friend a different number from 1 to 100. Friend number 1 flips every switch that is a multiple of 1, which is basically all of the switches. Friend number 2 then flips every switch that is a multiple of 2. Friend number three flips every multiple of three. This continues until all 100 friends have flipped the switches, with friend number 100 flipping only the 100 switch. After all of the flipping of switches, which light switches are left on? Okay. Note, when a friend flips a switch, they will turn an off switch to an on switch, and an on switch to an off switch. Okay. I've got texts and emails coming in, and I've got <laughs> uh, the second person who got it, a fifth grade boy, gave me all the, uh, the suits. Let me go to the emails here. I've got a fifth grader, another fifth grader who got all the playing cards. I've got a fourth grader, all the playing cards. I've got a sixth grade boy with all the cards. And I've got an eighth grader with all the cards. The eighth grader, you should be solving this riddle that I gave you uh, about the light switches, it is a classic riddle. It's a math riddle, so work towards that. I also have some riddles for Mr. Matt's line time later today that I want to share with you. So I've got the riddle with the switches, but here is the first of the one that Mr. Matt would like you to work on for this afternoon. So don't go ahead and don't send me your answers. I want you to wait with these for Mr. Matt for his line time. All right, so here's the first one for Mr. Matt. In a distant planet, there are four forms of life beings, Zados, Pugwigs, Cahoots, and Zingzangs. All Zados are Pugwigs, some Pugwigs are Cahoots, all Cahoots are Zinzags. Which of the following statements then must be true? So let me repeat this again. In a distant planet, there are four forms of life beings. Let me get out of the light here. There are some forms of life beings. Zados, Pugwigs, Cahoots, and Zingzangs. All Zados are Pugwigs. Some Pugwigs are Cahoots. All Cahoots are Zingzang, Zingzags. Which of the following statements must then be true? Number one, some Zados are Zingzangs, Zigzags. Mm. Number two, some Cahoots are Zados. Number three, all Cahoots are Pugwigs. Number four, some zigzags are pugwigs. Number five, all zigzags are zados. And number six, some zados are cahoots. So again, which of the following statements must then be true? Some zados are zigzags. Some cahoots are zados. All cahoots are pugwigs. Some zigzags are pugwigs. All zigzags are zados. Some zados are cahoots. 
Okay. And I think my eighth grader just got <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, 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 the light switch riddle. Good job. All right, let me share the ancient man riddle. This is the final riddle for Mr. Matt. An ancient Greek was said to have lived one fourth of his life as a boy, one fifth as a youth, one third as a man, and spent the last 13 years as an elderly jet. How old was he when he died? So this is the ancient man riddle. An ancient Greek was said to have lived one fourth of his life as a boy, one fifth, of the, one fifth as a youth, one third as a man, and spent the last 13 years as an elderly gent. How old was he when he died? All right, so there is that. I have been receiving texts and emails. Yes, seventh grade girl, you got the number of cards. Let's go back to the emails. I've got a fifth grader giving me the correct number of playing cards. All right, so I've got a, a student asking, uh, why is afternoon line time at 7.30? I really gotta do something about this sun. Why is afternoon line time at 2.30. Well, we moved it to 2.30 because we have moved our daily schedule. 1 to 1.30 is a middle school meeting time. And it generally takes about an hour to prepare a line time if you want to do it well. So we're giving Mr. Matt an hour to prepare his afternoon line time. Line times are a great interactive fun time and it's uh, very interesting, but you need to have a quote. You need to make sure you've got other things to talk about with the kids. I remember the first time we did the, uh, the live stream, <laughs> Mr. Matt and I were sitting there and we literally went through all of our content in the first five minutes. So it was pretty, pretty intense. You got to make sure you have content. So I hope that answers your question. It just gives us a little more time to prepare for the afternoon line time if we do it at 2.30 instead of 2.00. All right, let's take a look here. Yes, I've got a question. Mr. Matt now does the afternoon line time. That is correct. Mr. Matt is doing the, the afternoon line time live from our other remote studio here in Chicago. Remember, this is the remote studio number one. Mr. Matt will be working from remote studio number two. Okay, let's go back to the emails. Got a fifth grade girl giving me the number of playing cards correctly. Uh, the eighth grader, you have it, I think you're off maybe by one, but some of these that I see are definitely the correct answers, so you might want to rethink that. All right, so getting back to some of challenges as I wait for more texts and emails to roll in. So, first thing. Try to do some horticulture. Try to do some gardening. I challenge you to try to grow something. My mom was legendary for her green thumb. I am not sure what's going to happen here for me, but who knows? And very important to have some fun while you're doing this. For me, this is fun. Plants and eat them. That's the whole point for me. These green onions are looking good. This is promising. Of course, Henry was the one that did this. He did this. I did, I did these. So obviously he's having more success than I am at this point. Learning challenge. The next one was to parse the quote of the day. It's not as easy as it looks. All right. There's something about everything that makes it a little bit different. So if you're going to parse the quote of the day, it's not as easy as it looks. Okay. We've already got the playing cards going on, and we've got all sorts of riddles going on out there. Let's go back to the texts and emails. <laughs> I have a student says, you guys should come up with better names than remote studio number one and remote studio number two. That is true. I need to come up with some better names for that. If anybody has suggestions, that would be fabulous. All right, let's go back to the emails. Oh, and I've got an answer to the Greek one. However, eighth grader, please save that for Mr. Matt's afternoon line time. I will let him work with you on that one. Thank you very much, though. I also uh, had an idea, kids. We know uh, the school logo, what it looks like, but I think it would be great to come up with a online e-learning version of our school logo. I think that would be really interesting. And plus it would be a fun art project. So if you are interested in doing an extra art project this week, making our school logo 
look more like it's an online learning community. I think that would be super cool. It was an idea that I had. And of course, I'm not going to be the one that executes that idea because <laughs> we know that my stick figures are mediocre at best. Uh, I am much better at the crafty stuff than I am at the drawing stuff. So if you are interested in creating an online e-learning version of our school logo, I would love to read it. Okay. Oh, gosh, the text messages are coming in. I've got a seventh grader saying, uh, I will totally do the logo. And she says that Mr. Matt's remote studio should be called the Pun King's Lair. Misspelled Lair, by the way. Um, and she also says she will totally do the logo. Mr. Matt's coming in with some name ideas. Not bad, Mr. Matt. Let's go to, ah, this eighth grader is asking, is everything an abstract noun or is it a pronoun? Well, I will say this, it is one of the two, but uh, you're gonna have to figure out exactly what it is. Going back to the text message lines. Okay, thank you. Thank you for fixing your spelling. One of my pet peeves is, is people who send text messages and don't spell things correctly. My whole thing about this whole new world that we live in with respect to text messages and short email bursts, et cetera, is if you're going to do something for a formal letter or for a class, you might as well do it right in your text messages as well. I think that is just words to live by coming from somebody who loves grammar as much as I do. All right. So remember, kids, we've got several riddles to work on today. We've got learning challenges moving forward with gardening. We've got parsing, et cetera, et cetera. So I will say this, if you are having trouble finding where to turn in assignments, I will be looking at Henry's uh, program today to make sure that I can find my way to our classroom folders. If I cannot, uh, Mr. Matt or I can easily move those assignments to the Google Classroom Drive folders. You will see in Google Classroom that when you have an assignment, there may or may not be a YouTube video associated with it. So the YouTube video link is there at your convenience so that you can go ahead and watch that video. So I'm trying to connect YouTube and Google Classroom as much as I can. Uh, one of the great things that I've figured out about using YouTube is that you can pause the videos and you can go back and listen to them again. A lot of when I did my Montessori training, I took a lot of videos, I took a lot of pictures, and the ability to go back and pause and look at and figure out and move forward at your own pace is actually one of the great advantages of online e-learning that we're doing now. It's, there's just, it's just built in. You can pause. So I think that is a great, um, a great thing that you can do. It looks like we are, let's see how many more emails do I have coming in here. Do I have another text message? Uh, no, I've got some more people trying to answer the question with the cards. I need more people working on the light switch one. Uh, that one's a little more difficult. I will say this. Think about the term factors. Think about how every number has a factor of itself. And think about even odd, on, off, on, off, all the way down to 100. And by the way, that one was sent to me. That riddle was sent to me by a family. If you have riddles to send, math riddles, language riddles, Anything like that, that's a great way to uh, get the kids' brains moving at line time. Obviously, that's one of the things we want to do at line time is get everybody's brains active and moving. I will add that with respect to the schedule, I think I neglected to mention this. Usually on Mondays, we're going to be introducing the writing assignments for the week and going over what the reading for that writing assignment will be. The readings are going to be given out on Fridays for the next week. Tuesdays are when we go, are going to discuss science. Wednesdays will be math. Thursday will be work sharing time, like a writer's workshop. I loved it when we did that before spring break, that some of our most successful Zooms were when we were sharing our work and celebrating the work of our students. And Fridays will be check-in times and giving reading assignments for the next week, general discussions, maybe some history here or there. And that will be the schedule moving forward for now with our Zoom presentations. I'm going to be seeing fourth graders from 9.45 to 10.15. We're going to be talking with Mr. Matt about a little house on the prairie writing assignments. Then we'll be talking to the fifth graders. I may be sharing my screen. 
doing a little work on how we actually cite sources, parenthetical and with footnotes. One of the things that we can really take advantage of is the screen sharing, where I can literally just have a document in front of you and share how you actually do this in real time. So this is a, a, a great thing that we can do with the screen sharing. Sixth grade, we will be talking about our new reading assignment. Really excited about it, especially since there's a movie, I think. Call of the Wild. And then, of course, lunchtime, everybody's favorite. There will be no recess, but I encourage you to do recess on your own. I'm finding that physical exercise right now is one of the most important things that we can be doing just to maintain our just balanced, peaceful state of mind. I think it's great. And 1 to 1.30, we'll be meeting with the middle schoolers and talking about To Kill a Mockingbird. And then at 2.30 to 3, Mr. Matt will be running afternoon line time. So thank you all for tuning in. Let me go check the email one last time, see if we have any more emails coming in. Okay, no more emails, no more text messages. It's been great. I look forward to working with all of you. If you have any questions, please ask. I can't answer questions that are not asked. We appreciate you joining us for this adventure. And uh, I will tell you this. It's not going to be perfect, but we are going to do our best. We are going to work together as a community. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you at Zoom presentations. And then hopefully you'll have some riddles solved for Mr. Matt later in the afternoon. Have a great day. Bye.